Hi there, I'm Danny Henderson, spiritualtherapist.com. And in the screen is the queen. Her name is Ginny Jablonski. She's a very well-known globally soul whisperer, animal whisperer. And today she's bringing more of her incredible wisdom. Welcome Ginny Jablonski, my friend. Thank you, Danny. I'm really thrilled to be with you again today. I know we sat trying to decipher how we could be of best service at the moment as people are falling apart and putting themselves back together. And you've come up with some fantastic um, healing modalities and, and thought, thought forms to think about. And I'm just going to hand the floor over to you, Ginny. Wonderful. Well, we're sort of intending that this will be a part two to the talk we had a couple of weeks ago, you know, what are we experiencing and, and what does this mean? I, I forget the exact title of it. it. It was like, what are we feeling and what can we do about it? Right. Thank you. So this will go a, a little bit deeper on that. And um, we wanted to give you some insight into how to communicate or attempt best <laughs> to communicate with our soul lineage and oversoul. Uh, we want to talk a little bit about um, soul agreements today, pr primary soul agreements, uh, our ancestral lineage, and if we have time to chat a little bit about archetypes. So in the, um, in the Hindu tradition, there are models of uh, our soul and our consciousness and how we communicate and um, the chakras that are above the head and what they mean. And they refer to something called a monad, which I refer to as the oversoul. <clears throat> and yeah, for a moment, Ginny, just to say, you just said something so important and people are only just coming into their, you know, baby step in spiritual journey will have been programmed about these seven chakras inside the body or the seven anchor points, as I call them, or the seven energy systems. Most people do not know that there are a ton that continue up and continue down. Can you just touch on that for just a moment and then continue with the monad, please? Right. Um, it's more generally accepted, I think, by most of the philosophies I'm aware of to discuss only five below the feet and five above the head. Um, I see a greater number than that. Um, with respect to the light bodies as well, people talk about 12 levels of light bodies, and I, I am aware at least of 21. Um, people talk about layers or levels within each chakra. Some people will say there are only seven. Some people will say there are 12. I see more <laughs> than, than 12. Um, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Jelly brain too, for me, I'm forgetting the question that you asked, but I think you were wanting me to just share about that we do have access to chakras above our head, chakras below our feet. What do they mean? Correct? Yeah, that's the fact that just to entertain the idea and bring the idea for those that don't know that there are numerous chakras up and down that all belong to us. We all have our own. No one's allowed to touch, interfere or block. Uh, but now they know. People that didn't know, now they know. So then you were saying about the monad. Right. And um, from, I call that the oversoul. Um, and the, I have a description. It's a very simple, almost cartoonish description of the oversoul, which is basically a jelly bean jar. <laughs> and so if you think of all, all of our aspects, our soul aspects, and there are so many different perspectives. If you talk to sh some shaman, they will say that spirit is the auric field or the luminous architecture and spirit is the vehicle through which the soul incarnates. And if you talk to others, they will say the soul is the vehicle through which the consciousness incarnates. So the more one studies, the more one can get confused. And that certainly happened for me in spades on my journey. And so that's why I, I think everybody can tell that when I talk, I try to be very practical, very simple, very grounded to use terms that hopefully everybody can understand. But if someone out there is married to a specific philosophy or modality, the way I communicate about it may or may, or may not resonate. Um, if we study many different spiritual philosophies, we can draw the common threads 
because they do in in Taoism, they talk about the soul and the incorruptible spirit in buddhism they talk about this in hinduism they talk about this in in every major religion they talk about this um there's a book called hamlet's mill that um is a beautiful book that outlines i think it's the 13 um most common religions on the planet and that might be a book that if somebody's interested in numerous spiritual philosophies that someone could read. But my perspective is that if we think of the oversoul like a jelly bean jar, and the jelly bean jar is filled with individual, um, in the law of one series that's called consciousness unit, I, I refer to it as a soul, the soul, each jelly bean in the jelly bean jar is a soul, a unique soul aspect. And we come out of the jelly bean jar and we choose to incarnate in some reality. Um, some people talk about our oversouls existing in the sixth density. Um, I have met people who definitely have oversouls in higher density. So I think right now on the planet, we are breaking all the molds. Uh, so many different souls from so many different places have come here that I don't think I've met very many people that, um, that these uh millennia old theories really apply to but if we were to just talk in terms of just monad just oversoul the way i like to describe it is a jelly bean jar and our soul a, a, a fractal an aspect of an individual soul comes out of the jelly bean jar and incarnates on a planet and especially on earth we get caught up in all of these rules and guidelines and this holographic system that we agreed to participate in for whatever reason whether it be because we came here to learn or whether it be a lot of us have come here now to try to figure out what the heck is going on here and what's taking us all so long and right? a lot of us came here to kick some ass that's right um i know many people who's um sole purpose actually says in their soul agreement to put an end to the entrapment and enslavement of souls. I know several people that fall into that category. So yeah. So if you can imagine that some of us, um, we're here to unify all of the fractals of our jelly beans that we have um incarnated in on different planets in different densities for whatever reason so if one jelly bean one soul comes out of the jelly bean jar and we come into a fourth density or a third density experience extreme polarity duality domination and control such as what we've been experiencing for millennia here on the planet we've been more aware of it i think more so in the last um, several uh, hundred years, um, when, if you think of looking at the jelly bean when it's done as being kind of smushed or <laughs> just like a chewed up jawbreaker, you know, and we're kind of, um, the part of us that has incarnate, not the pure and corruptible part of us that is never incarnated, but the part of us that did incarnate and got its ass kicked, right? Um, that's the part that we are trying to address to heal. I ask you a question again, thinking about those who are just newly coming into their spiritual awakening and they're all, everyone's on the fast track, guys. Don't put yourself down. Don't think, oh God, I'm late to the party. It doesn't matter. You're the lucky ones. You're on the fast track. You're the lucky ones. Um, would it be right to say that the part of us that does not reincarnate in the physical body and have to go through the hell that we've all gone through and go through, would that be called your higher self, your oversoul, your higher soul? How would you describe that to someone that doesn't know and, and will ask that question? when they hear what you just said? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I, I have to say, I know many people who don't like the descriptors that are hierarchical, which would include higher self, over soul, et cetera. So I don't mean to offend anybody. I'm just trying to give a description that might resonate with the most number of people. Um, generally, the language higher self is, is the language that people use to describe the part of us that hasn't fully incarnated. However, when I actually talk to souls and I talk to a higher self, it is often what I can only refer to as a primary guide. 
It is a guide of an aspect of their soul, another jelly bean in the jelly bean jar that hasn't ever incarnated here. And that's, I think, one of the frustrating things for so many of us is we're getting advice from beings who haven't yet incarnated here and they don't understand how difficult it is to get out from under the unconscious, subconscious projections of mind programming that we are all subject to. And when I speak with souls, they often tell me they didn't realize that they would continue to be subject to the unhealed wounds or the unprocessed, uh, uh, agreed upon archetypal programs, patterns, et cetera, from other lifetimes. And I often see people's energy field just littered with the remnants of unresolved issues from other lifetimes. So um, it depends on your perspective and I don't wanna confuse people. So if it makes it easier to call the part of our soul that is waiting to, to be embodied our higher self, then we can refer to that that way the higher self being a part of us that is still pure, that still is able to activate our DNA and kick into gear our ascension process, activate the light bot, the level of light body template within the etheric body that we all hold as human beings, we have that. Um, then that, that might be helpful for some people. Yes. So I'm going to share something that personally happened to me, and I really haven't shared it in any great detail thus far, but I think this is a very good moment to do that because we are, all of us, no matter how far along we are in the understanding that we're taking our planet back and that the energies that have been trying to suffocate, kill and repress us have got so many holes in their fabric now that the light is shining through and we are pushing through and they are obviously being pushed to the side and down below where they truly belong. Um, and a few weeks ago, um, as a clairvoyant medium, I've seen my entire life, I see things all of the time that are really quite remarkable and for most unexplainable. So it was, uh, it was actually last year, it wasn't this year, but time's just going so fast. Um, I woke up and there was a woman standing at the end of my bed. And my natural, I mean, I'm like, do I, do I grab my gun, my hammer, or just my fist? And uh, the very first thing I did was in that nanosecond that you have to recognize, realize what course of action will I take? There's some woman standing at the end of my bed and she should not be there. So I leapt up and I punched. And when I punched into her, not only did I realize that she was the spitting image of me, but younger and very beautiful. I mean, you know, this whole thing here, but the woman that I connected to was just gorgeous. So I punch her. And I made contact with her. She was physical. And she was standing there like this. Kind of what, like I would do, like, come on, Danny. Come on, girl. Wakey, wakey. And as I, as I punched and connected to myself and I punched her in the shoulder, I shit myself in that moment. You think, oh, fuck, she's solid. She's solid. It's going down. And then I realized, hang on, that's me. And then she just vanished. So that was me from the future. And I don't care how whacked it sounds. You probably would have left a few minutes ago at this point <laughs> if you weren't going to be interested in this material. But yeah, that was me from the future. So there are some of us that are being reminded we came from the future to sort out the garbage on the planet, the people that run it, that's the garbage, um, and take this beautiful planet back. And it's already played out. Everything is already played out. So I think it's important that we have this mind opening awareness of the jelly bean, the oversoul, the higher self, the primal guide, the primary guide, the supreme being, the future self, all of that. Now, Ginny, please continue. Thank you for letting me pop in there. So something that I experienced, and I think a lot of other people are experiencing, and it, it's contributing to confusion. It's making it difficult for people to feel as if they're getting somewhere in their healing. They, they feel like, I've tried all of this. I know all of this. This is, you know, kindergarten stuff. But they're, but they're still being triggered. They can't have balanced relationships with women or with men, or there's chaos all around them. And if there's chaos all around us, 
And our, we are triggered by people just writing something on the internet or um, making comments to us or trying to offer suggestions to us then we have some unresolved stuff. And I think a few things that are we're trying to share, a few things that are contributing to the challenges and the frustration. So one thing is, for example, my jelly bean, my jelly bean was so gung-ho to figure all this out and do this work and help humanity that it fractured itself into far too many aspects on the planet. Okay, so each jelly bean, it's, it is your soul, but we can fracture our soul into, you know, percentage of light, percentage of light, percentage of light. And we can have multiple incarnations on the planet right now as well. So contemporaneous incarnations, as well as past and future. In addition, in other densities on other planets. And there is a theory that many of us have other aspects, other fractals of our jelly bean, of our soul, who are contemporaneously incarnate on other third or fourth density planets that are um, going through the ascension process as well. So the goal, a goal for some souls, is to reconcile, to resolve to bring the aspects, let's just talk about this life, this one life for a person. And when we make choices that aren't in alignment with our soul purpose, our original soul life plan, that's one of the things that causes us to fracture off and have multiple timelines going of one life. And nobody talks about it. There are a lot of people channeling messages out there right now saying, isn't it exciting that we live in a holographic universe and there we could make billions of choices and exist on billions of timelines? My answer to that is, hell no, it's not exciting. It's frustrating because I am at the effect of all of the choices and energies of all of the other fractals of myself in all of the other timelines which is why so many people have worked so hard to get earth herself down to one timeline. Mm. So if you're noticing, I notice a lot, you know, I have a lot of books and have read a lot of books and I picked up a book today and I noticed that the definition of a really important spiritual term was different in the book now than it was when I read the book five or six years ago. And some of the language in, you know, a lot of people are really interested in the, the raw material, the law of one material right now. And there are things in the past several months that are now different in the law of one than and, and in writing. It doesn't exist anymore because the timeline collapsed, but people remember it being different. And this is called the mandala effect. That's another thing that's contributing to such confusion on the planet right now is people are saying, well, I don't remember it that way, or that's not what this means, or that's not how you do this. Or, so that's why I'm trying to make it really simple for people to understand. We are gathering, you're talking to the monkey. It's a monkey. The baby's literally waving at me. It's oh, hi, baby. Literally waving. That's never happened. How beautiful. And Billy... The, the daddy, the male, he's right there. It's so, guys, I live in Costa Rica and I live in the jungle canopy. And I know I've got my space grand. I wish I didn't because I'm like, oh, it's, it's so rude. They have white balls. They have white testicles. And it's so bizarre, but it's so beautiful. The baby was literally waving at me. That's just, sorry, I couldn't, that was way too precious not to share with everybody. Wow. Wow. Sorry, Ginny, please continue. No, sure. So, not only do we have different incarnations on the planet, some of us, and on other planets, we also in this life have other aspects of us in other timelines for us in our life experience that are not yet resolved. And that is part of the hero's journey, the spiritual journey, finding out where some of these beliefs and unforgiveness are actually coming from. And it's, it's really um, confusing a lot of people. So the reason why we're bringing this up with Oversoul, Higher Self, et cetera, is that we can ask for help. And Danny, you mentioned this a little bit earlier. You said we're on an accelerated journey. And I, I see that to be true every day with the people that I work with. 
things that took me months and years to resolve within my conscious awareness are taking people weeks and months or sometimes days. And sometimes I watch people's fractals come back together so fast. I think this person just healed, at least energetically, they may not have integrated into their physical yet, into their conscious awareness yet, but I watch people do so much energy work that I estimate it must have taken me a year or two to accomplish that much work. So because this level of healing is available now, souls are saying, yeah, I thought when I came in here, I wanted to experience those things, but I'm ready to let you off the hook now. Let's just gather Change my mind. Exactly. Yeah. Like I've had so many people's souls tell me I've bit off more than I can chew. I'm not exactly sure how to get my conscious person out of this now. Um, we could go on and on and on and talk for a week about that level of conversation. So what is happening now is we are able to get more assistance. And frankly, I've had several souls tell me, you know, I, I've already done this. I've already ascended from a third density or fourth density reality so many times. I've had souls say three times, a dozen times. I myself, my soul told me 17 times. I've ascended from a third density reality and gone, you know, to many levels beyond. And I, I keep coming back. And my soul said, I just had to make these choices to come back into this reality. And then I really fell and wasn't able to control the snowball effect of what was really going on in the planet and the magic that's been used against us and the abductions and the alteration of the DNA. And it's, it's not that easy to resolve all of this in a vacuum. Thankfully, some people are. Some people are finding it easy and they're just making a choice to be happy or they're letting things go or however their soul contract is written that they're maybe on vacation earth this time and they're not having to live a lot of um, uh, through a lot of crisis situation or experience pain and suffering. But I have rarely ever met anyone like that. I've heard actually of two people like that. In fact, one man wanted to write a book called Vacation Earth because it's been so easy for him. <laughs> but that, he those needs aren't a good things. slapping, that one. I'm just kidding. He doesn't. He doesn't. Um, or a pillow fight at the very least. Um, I want to raise a couple of things here. Again, just using the normal, natural, you know, average kind of thinking that hasn't, you know, ascended or they're just coming up the ranks now. Um, a lot of people, they're programming because we're also programmed. We're just amazing computers that you can program, mainframes. Uh, a lot of people will be like, oh, yeah, I know what she's talking about. She's talking about karma. You come to the earth, you learn your lessons. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so over that old shit. I don't believe it. I'm not having it for myself anymore. I'm not saying that word anymore because I think, oh, it's just your karma. You lost your job, did you? You lost your partner, you lost all your money, your kid doesn't speak to you, you blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's just your karma, is it? No, it's not just your karma. It's not just your karma. Don't accept that. That's just an urban myth that's been, you know, programmed into you so deeply and it just annoys me so much. People just, but we all do it. We all do it. Look at the woman who can't have a baby. She's trying, she's upset, it's very difficult. And what do her friends say to her? Relax. Don't be so desperate. Oh my God, that is so the wrong thing to say to a woman that can't have a baby. You know, but but it's an automatic, we're on automatic, we are programmed with automatic responses, guys. And I know you know that, but it's good to have that reminder as well. So it isn't just your karma. Sometimes it's a shitty guide that's in your space, that's hanging out with you and interfering with your life purpose because maybe you're evolving faster than your guide is because guess what the guides are evolving too they do not own you they do not run you their job is to support you a bit like your governments but let's not go there yeah their job is to support you and if they're not imagine them all in your mind line them up and fire their asses one by one now you can go into martyr mode now you can go into victim mode and you can be a narcissist right this second and you can say i could never do that why not why not? You want to keep on suffering? You want to keep learning these so-called karmic lessons? You know, it's time we all leveled up for ourselves. And, you know, people like Ginny, 
gifting her wealth of knowledge for us, you know, to tell us that we don't have to put up with the way things have been. We all get to reprogram, we all get to rethink right now because we're amazing. We are amazing. The other thing you mentioned, Junie, which is just so brilliant, you mentioned the Mandela or the Mandala effect. Mm -hmm. And I have heard this, that there literally are books like you said the law of one the you know the 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 collection of ra 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 the sun god there are people rereading or reading like you just said and it's not reading the same it's like the words have changed or they don't remember that piece being in there or they can't find a certain piece it's literally because as the timeline collapses into one, and as you beautiful, beautiful beings are reclaiming your power, your love for self and each other, all of these dreadful, horrific chains are breaking off and falling apart. And so we're actually seeing what we were supposed to be seeing because we couldn't see it before. It's so amazing, isn't it, Ginny? It's so, so magical. Right. Several um, interviews back that we've done or workshops that you and I have done together back, you and I talked about guides and are both you and I very frustrated with guides. And I had a really interesting experience with my guide that said, uh, because I had done a healing for myself and hours later, the energy came back and I was razzle frazzle, you know, really upset <laughs> driving down the street through my car in park, I'm like, all right, I'm going to have, you know, a coffee. I shouldn't have a coffee. I'm just mad right now. And I went to get out of the car and my guide said, I'm sorry, it was me. It's not your soul. It wasn't a soul choice. And I'm like, well, who are you and what do you mean? And it was a specific guide of mine that had been with me in other lives. And it had to do with a lesson I had chosen to learn or experience in a past life. And the guide actually didn't realize that we have these remnants of these geometries, these programs in our energy bodies right now from other lifetimes and if we know that our healing is spherical 365 degrees and we are experiencing some of us more than others a knowing and a sensitivity to energies that we are at the effect of in other lifetimes i more than anybody i've ever known have been very aware of the contemporaneous lifetimes with patterns and programs and agreements all happening at one time feeling like I am diffuse and I am literally all of those things, but here in this one body. And by diffuse, I mean 48 hours of time and experience is, is me not even, I couldn't even fit in this physical body. And that's what, as the energies shift and allow us to activate other levels of our DNA, we begin to become more aware and our energy, our psycho-spiritual apparatus, the luminous architecture is subtly shifting and changing. The um, neural pathways in our brain, our brain, our pineal gland, our pituitary gland are beginning to work differently, but we haven't had the kindergarten training yet. We just haven't because nobody's really talking about the fact that the brain is a pharmacy and the mind is the prescribing doctor. And nobody is talking about how those subconscious programs and patterns get in there and how we can get them out. And I am trying to shout from the rooftops, simple, practical, mystical tools that anyone can use to do this effectively, efficiently, with mental health, <laughs> not going into extreme distress and doing it in a way that can integrate into the physical experience, having as little cognitive dissonance as possible and with as little distress as possible. But I see so many people out there and this is why I'm doing it. They are in a position of authority. People are listening to them. They are teaching. They are doing whatever it is they're doing on the planet, but they are not self-aware. So they don't understand that what's going on, the patterns that are affecting them in their life are so sim simple to identify the cause of it, the foundational pattern, the reason it's happening over and over. And if we knew that, if there was a book that was written that just told us step one, step two, step three, step four, generally speaking, 
how if we cannot have a balanced relationship with a woman, we don't trust other women, we have to sabotage our relationships with women. No longer do we have to say, I must be here in this life to learn that lesson. That must be something my soul is wanting to work out in this life. No more. Mm -hmm. No more. We don't have to spend 10 more years experiencing that. But it takes self-awareness to say, hey, maybe that wasn't Danny's fault, that thing, or I'm not I'm just using you as an example, Danny, you didn't upset me, but do you, do you know what I mean? Um, maybe it was me. Maybe I need to look under the hood and find out what I agreed to or what pattern that I'm still running from my ancestral lineage or my mother or my father or what other contemporaneous life I am at the effect of. Because we are the ones here now at this time on this planet, in this body, and we get to make the choices to evolve and let go of those patterns and programs. So sorry for getting a little excited. Oh, you're supposed to. It's the Danny Henderson channel where we all get excited and passionate and speak our minds and tell the truth. Um, Ginny, it's, there's a couple of things here. I really feel like we should give everyone that does come to see this broadcast an oversoul exercise so they themselves can access their oversouls. I also think it would be very beneficial for you to explain the difference between the mind and the brain, because you mentioned both as individual organisms or things, so people might be a bit confused about that. And, um, oh gosh, there's so, so many different ways we could go. There's never enough time to do everything. I wanna give a quick exercise, guys. We've been talking about these awful binding soul contracts. Um, I don't know if you can see me, I was trying to try something new with the, um, but I only see you on the screen. Oh, maybe I should just switch. Oh, I don't know. Let's just see what, how it turns out. You know, it's an experiment. Um, so your the greatest way, the greatest gift you have, the way that you teleport, the way that you time travel, the way that you bring beautiful healing into your body, the way that you tap into your beautiful magical powers, is through your pituitary gland here in the brain, behind the third eye. Uh, I said pituitary, I meant to say pineal, pineal. But the pituitary is very important too. I call it the pin in the pit. Um, the pineal gland is your golden, it's like, it's like a beautiful crystal. Like a beautiful, this is a Lemurian crystal. It's like a beautiful crystal. It's yours and only yours. And it's so magical. So here's what I do. I, I imagine that I'm going into a white room and I'm in this beautiful white, 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 white room. And the room is pounding with power. And it's just so mu beautiful and musical and high vibratory resonances. And I am literally inside my pineal gland. And then while I'm in there, I imagine a table. And on that table, there are contracts. And on, that, on, the, on the contracts are names of people, or maybe habits, maybe it's drinking, smoking, overeating, lying, cheating, who knows? And what I will do is pick up a contract and pick up a lighter and then ask the being connected to the habit or the person I need to delete out of my life to come in the door. They have no mouth, they make no sound, they have no power. They are in your space and they get to shut that up. I don't care who it is, it's scary mom, a violent husband, a violent, violent wife, a, a child, doesn't matter. They have no power. They are way smaller than you. You show them that you are burning the contract and then you say, I sever all pain permanently connected with you, past, present and future. And you can say all dimensions known and unknown, all situations seen and unseen, it's completely up to you. And you can just stop this video right now, this broadcast, and you can just play that back and write it down or record it on your phone. And I, I welcome you to do that, to try this exercise. That way you will get rid of years and years of drama and karma and nonsense. Delete it. You're allowed to. It's your brain, it's your mind. Don't go into victim, martyr, narcissist. We're here to have fun. So let's play with our own magnificent manifested beingnesses. Ginny, over to you. Um, 
Well, it, it, it used to be that there was this whole process that you had to become aware of and we had to express. And I'm not saying that it's not important, that the process isn't important. What I'm suggesting is that the process can be somewhat accelerated for some souls. I mean, please know there are some souls who maybe really haven't come to earth before and they're here for the first time in a third density reality and they're still enjoying experiencing this so it won't be every single soul it it, it won't be every single person but for most of for in, in my experience most of us are more than ready to move on at this point um so you had asked if I would give people oversoul. ideas on how to communicate with the oversoul. Oversoul exercise, yeah, because I think it's unfair that we're giving them all this amazing you know, um, information, but they deserve to have exercises that they themselves can help themselves and accelerate right. this journey that we're all on. Right, right. Now, we're skipping a, a several different conversations that I think in the future we may have um, if we decide to move forward with doing this in a less scattered and more sort of methodical way, which would be wonderful. Um, and by scattered, I mean, like I'm jumping ahead and I, you know, there are things I would prefer to say first, but here's an exercise that we can all do. Firstly, let me give you some language, really simple language. I give myself permission to heal. I give myself permission to remember the truth of who I am. I give myself permission to make a different choice. I give myself permission to hear messages from my, my higher self, my guides, my oversoul. I give myself permission to feel safe doing this. Now, there's a whole other conversation about psycho spiritual gifts and this apparatus and how the gifts are manifested. And frankly, that's a function of the soul and the DNA being activated by frequency. So your soul is making a choice. And that's why I added in there. I give myself permission to make a different choice because it's our soul is the one who is actually choosing the rate at which we evolve. That is, that is very true. It, everything that I see points to that as an absolute fact. So if we do that, then we learn how to properly ground because very few people even discuss how to properly ground and bring ourselves into alignment, breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth, as we are breathing in. I'm sorry, my husband turned on the washer and dryer and my door's open, just a moment. <laughs> sorry, real life. Is <laughs> um, that? Um, as we breathe in, imagine or pretend that you are breathing in pure life force energy. Of course, it is coming. You are illuminating from within, but you can also call in that pure chi, prana, life force energy, pure, the pure light of creation down through your head. And as you are inhaling, bringing earth energy up through your feet. People primarily talk about grounding through the root chakra and the grounding cord, and they sort of bypass the idea that our field, our luminous architecture requires a certain percentage of earth energy in our field because we live on earth. And how the earth energy gets into our system, our luminous architecture is through the chakras in our feet. So if as you're breathing in, you imagine the chakras in your feet breathing in earth energy, you may wish to visualize roots coming down from your feet into the earth. You don't have to go the whole way into the earth. In fact, I have seen many things energetically that make me absolutely not want to do that. Just into the earth. And allow yourself to use that cord um, 
to orient yourself today, May 21st, 2022, I live on earth, the third planet from the sun, right? Mm -hmm. Al allow that to be the purpose. Um, so as we're inhaling, we are breathing in or recirculating our own divine light, light of creation, prana chi, whatever you want to call it, ki from the Egyptians or Palladian, Pleiadian, sorry. Um, and then earth energy up through our feet. So as that earth energy comes up through our feet, it gets, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It gets um, refined through the chakras in the knees to the perfect uh, frequency and percentage for us comes up to the root chakra and it meets that life force energy that's coming down in the back channels of the upper chakras at the root chakra. It mixes into that perfect distribution, which according to the Berkeley Psych Psychic Institute is 85% life force energy, 15% earth energy. To my knowledge, the last time I checked, the book might be different now, I don't know. And allow that energy to continue to flow up the front channels of the upper chakras and shower out through your field and allow some energy to be released down that grounding cord and to go out the bottom of your energy field. So once you are grounded and centered, and hopefully we are now becoming into a more coherent heart rhythm, our brain is connecting with our heart, we are um, we are breathing more calmly. Our nervous system is calming down. We're out of the sympathetic and into the parasympathetic. And we are breathing and focusing on our heart space. Within that space, that is where we can begin to set our intentions. Setting our intention to shine the light of truth on ourself and to ask our oversoul for assistance, to act, to call forward, uh, if you prefer the language higher self, as opposed to soul, ask our higher self and our oversoul for the highest level of assistance. Often these days, we don't even really need to know exactly what that is. If you know what it is, if it's a conflict within your family, if it's an item on your soul agreement that you want to let go of, if it's a belief that's limiting you, or you don't understand what belief it is, Ask that your oversoul to come forward to assist you in beginning a process of self-inquiry so that it, in your own free will, in your own life experience, you can begin to manage what is happening to you psycho-spiritually, energetically, physically. We can take back our power and we can ask for that assistance. Now, in the, in the olden days, <laughs> It used to be that um, we would have to heal everything in our root chakra, everything in our sacral chakra, everything in our solar plexus. We're gathering up all our life force energy, all the ways that our consciousness is expressing itself through, um, through lack, through poverty, through pain, through suffering, imbalance, masculine and feminine imbalance. Um, doubt, frustration, fear, unworthiness in the solar plexus, etc. We can do this. I'm starting to get dizzy. I feel my own oversoul around me right now. Mm. We can do this. Now, I'm not suggesting that magically in one hour, everything can go away, but we can begin to initiate a process of this intention and this level of communication with our oversoul to assist us at this time on earth, because it's zero hour. Now, do all of us have an agreement or have, is it our sole purpose to, let's say if you were to buy into the idea of, and I'm not saying buy in in a way that I don't, I'm, I'm just saying that if you believe that there are, let's say waves of humanity that are going through it, essentially, you know, first wave, second wave, third wave, yeah. we have to be careful not to, compare ourselves if we're in the third wave to someone in the first wave we have to be careful not to blame ourselves and think there's something wrong with us or you know why am i being punished we aren't being punished we have not been educated about our own subconscious and the level to which it affects our conscious life 
we haven't been educated to ask the right questions to go through the process of self inquiry mm -hmm. if you begin this process together with six eight ten other things that danny and i would like to talk to you about over the next six eight ten weeks we can really um, make a tremendous amount of progress in a short period of time i know that this seems a little bit scattered this um danny and i are very excited about sharing this information yeah and that's because of me you know and i i that's because of me because you were extremely well prepared for today but as we're going through, it's not a but, it's an and. You know, I just know that, you know, it's our duty, I feel, to give people, gift people exercises they can do themselves to get them further and faster along, things they can handle, you know, without being patronizing, you know, because I know if I was watching you, Ginny, I'd be like, well, how do I connect to my oversoul? And I didn't know I had chakras in my feet. What do you mean I can ground my energy into the world? What do you mean I can call back my life force energy? This is amazing information. What's also incredible is that you and I studied at the same metaphysical school, which was the Berkeley Psychic Institute, which is no more, of course. Of course, it's not there anymore. They took that away. But we, I went to a school where a man, Dr. Chris Lamont, who I've had on my channel already, he's like my mentor. Um, I mean, people say you need six or seven mentors. I don't believe that myself. And I'm not being arrogant. I just don't believe it. How many mentors do you have? Oh, I have 37. You know, some people have got a mentor for this and a mentor. Good for you. And most of them are loaded as well. They can afford all these mentors, you know, but I, for me, I've just had the one mainly, and that's Dr. Chris Lamont. And I had to actually ask him to come back um, and play with me again on my channel. Hopefully he will. Uh, but it's so interesting. So I started under him, same lessons created by Lewis Bostwick. I think his name is the great Lewis Bostwick, who's dead now. And then also Laura Eisenhower, who I had on, on my channel yesterday. She studied with them as well. And there's some fantastic uh lessons that we're giving you for free here to help you in your beautiful beautiful lives a beautiful world so yeah it's me that got us distracted mrs add and i'm like oh 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 <laughs> continue well, and and just to just to be clear um full disclosure i studied with michael tamora who used to be um an executive within Ber berkeley psychic institute so he took all of that data as your mentor did and he added to it he was a man who had five near-death experiences five or six near-death experiences and has brought some remarkable information if you are someone who wants to choose one program to study and who wants a level of self-awareness through a clairvoyant program, Michael Tamora would be um, someone uh, that you could um, learn from. His teaching is remarkable. And he wrote this book, You Are the Answer. And so that is basically my, my message is we are the answer. Self-awareness Self-awareness is the answer. Um, I have to be careful because my soul told me like 500,000 times, forgiveness is the key, love is the answer. <laughs> uh, so we have, there are multiple answers, but yeah. we are, we ultimately are the key in our self-awareness to understand what is happening to us. So how, let me just briefly for three minutes, how did I get to this place of, being so passionate about sharing information that very few people talk about. There are so many programs out there that want to help you address one specific thing, manifesting, for example, or boundaries, or open your psychic gifts, or right. There are programs like that. And some of them are two, six, 12, $20,000. And believe me, I've spent tons of money <laughs> on, on this type of thing. But the reason I kept pushing and asking and came to this place is because after my near-death experience in 2012, I would be walking in the grocery store and I was simultaneously aware of past lives and I didn't know what that meant. And I would say to myself, oh, I just got ran over by a car. Oh, I just fell off a cliff. I was riding a horse. I'm under the horse. Oh, I just had an arrow slung in me and I have an arrow and I'm stuck. And I would have to be careful when I was driving a car. I, for, I would park and forget to put it in park. And one time my car went flying across the parking lot and smashed into a brand new Ford Bronco. Oh my. Because because I was so simultaneously aware 
and not even in my body. I didn't yeah. understand. Um, I could be sitting down and literally know that I was face planted on a dirt road and a horse and carriage just ran over me. Or one time a motorcycle and four of my vertebrae went clunk, clunk in my spine, clunk, clunk, four of them. And I felt a tire run over me. So I was simultaneously aware, not only of past future lives, but contemporaneous lives on this planet and lives on other planets as well. And there were so few people that could talk to me about this kind of thing. That's why I kept going and searching, searching and looking for different teachers. And, and that's why I have 50 books on my desk right now that I want to share with anybody who is interested in, in some of these books, because one or two or three of the books might interest you and it might give you some insight, open a door into your, into your psyche and into your consciousness. It takes people and more and more of us are becoming this self-aware every day. Unfortunately, most people don't know what to do with it. What do I do with this information? I meet people every day, clients that have been sort of like us for 20, 30 years, maybe ever since they were a child. Their family told them to shut it down. They have nobody to talk to about this. Those are some of the people who are watching your channel, Danny. These are the people that we're wanting to communicate with, to let them know that they're not alone, to let them know that there are practical tools that you don't need a shaman to do a soul retrieval for you. Now, I'm not saying that people that have serious mental illness or psychological problems shouldn't go to doctors, shouldn't go to psychiatrists, because that's just not true. I'm not going to tell everybody or even anybody that all the physical assumption symptoms that you're feeling, you shouldn't go to the emergency room because I'm not a doctor, because I'm not a psychiatrist. What I am is a very self-aware person who has learned from many, many different masters, many, many different philosophies, many different healing modalities. And I have pulled all the common threads to help us succinctly, easily, practically understand what is happening to us and get beyond this so we can get to the good stuff in this life and we can support the planet through our own healing by holding a higher frequency and i'm sorry but most people who are like me or like you danny who have had trauma who have suffered who have had difficult childhoods or who have made the choice to fracture ourselves into many different contemporaneous lifetimes it's not that easy to just choose to be happy. I've gotten on some group uh, calls where they tell everybody, don't worry about healing. Healing isn't necessary. Just raise your frequency. Those are people who are not aware and Most cannot. They shouldn't be teaching. They cannot see their own energy. They right. don't know what's going on in their chakras. And all of those unhealed wounds are your frequency. It is you. The stuff that we are not aware of, that's our frequency. You can live on flower petals and be a <laughs> breatharian. And I'm sorry, but if the core wounds, if the soul agreement, if the choice, if we are not healing in alignment with our soul and we are not communicating with our higher self or our oversoul, then we are not having an easy a time as we could good on this journey and it doesn't have to be so hard we don't have to suffer as much we don't have to keep going to the doctors and the uh, um chiropractors after we do the work and figure out what emotionally is contributing to the pain and suffering again so much there you know you're talking about past lives but you're also potentially talking about parallel lives and it's such a mind um, a mind fuck for people. It's just, you know, so don't worry too much about every single thing. Just take this broadcast or this program that we're doing for you, just a, you know, a, a bit at a time, a little bit at a time here. And, you know, Ginny and I, you know, we have largely, massively the same, same ideas, same, same contact concepts and some things not, you know, and that's all right too. 
you know we just share what we've got and what resonates with you you absorb and what doesn't you throw it away it doesn't matter we're not going to have our feelings hurt by it that's for sure and um, I when you're getting your books that you're going to show um, to our audience here um, ready in the order that you'd like to show them. I'd like to um, uh, give you guys another tool and technique that Ginny actually suggested that I shared with you today. Uh, and it's a technique that we learned at our metaphysical schools uh, with our teachers. And I just wanna mention my teacher again. His name is Dr. Chris with two S's, Lemon with two S's. And I love this man. And there is a broadcast on my channel here with he and I. Um, and um, he is just beyond and there is he has a little YouTube channel and the work on it I mean for those of you who really want to jump ahead for those of you that are ready for really kind of scholarly you know a, a metaphysical academia I welcome you go to his YouTube channel, which I think is Dr. Chris Lamont. Um, I just have a link to it in my bookmarks. I just go on and see what my mate's doing, you know, so, but forgive me. So, but Dr. Chris Lamont, two S's, two M's. And he, um, he taught me this technique years and years ago and, and it's called Golden Sun. So know that everything you do in life, you are giving your energy away. People are also taking a piece of you. You know, those that dominate, those that are unkind, those that hurt you, they get a little piece of your soul light frequency. Isn't that horrible to know? So, and if you care a hoot about what one person thinks about you, they also own a piece of you. So a little piece of your soul is in prison with them. It's imprisoned. Your energy is imprisoned with them. So let's not put up with that anymore. All right, this is for every level of authority, every parent that ever hurt you, everything, everything, everything. Um, neighbors going by sorry um, so what you do is this you imagine a golden sun a beautiful beautiful golden sun and you imagine it above your head above your crown chakra and then you let this beautiful golden sun energy just gently gently sink into you Remember when you were at school and you'd do the pretend to crack an egg on the head and then you would let that, I love that tickly feeling, I love that, you know, all around. It's kind of like that, you imagine that. Some of you will literally feel warmth. And as you're letting the golden sun go down in you, inside of you, you can see the light just shining and lighting you up from the inside out. It's absolutely beautiful, beautiful. And because you're using your imagination to bring the information, a term I've used in a lot of my broadcasts here, you are making it very physically real, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, ethereal, astrally real. It's like magic. Now, you don't need to really think about the person who you want to bring your life force energy back from. It doesn't matter. You don't need to make it personal because once you engage in that emotion, the emotional hooking, as we call it, you know, it kind of ruins the exercise for you. But what you can do is you can imagine like 20 golden suns. Imagine them all lined up, all lined up. And you can set frequency. You can imagine putting silver energy through one or green healing Archangel Raphael energy through another or some purple or some royal blue for truth. And you can line all these gold suns up in your mind, in your imagination, and literally just imagine them all coming through. And then because you've set that in place for yourself, metaphysically, you can just forget about it. Forget about it. And they will just keep on dripping through clearing your space that what you are doing is calling back your life force energy. My darlings, my friends, everybody who will see this, we really recommend this exercise. It is so empowering, isn't it, Ginny? What do you think about it, Golden Suns? Yes, I think it's a wonderful way. It, I think that underscores for me something that would be helpful for people to understand, and that is the more we can feel, it, let's say that you don't have your um, psychic senses are, aren't all turned on right now. So you're not really clairvoyantly perceiving everything the way I would or, or Danny would. If you can feel it, 
if you can feel the intention that you're setting, if you can feel the frequency that you're inviting in, if you can feel the thing that you want to release from your hip or your shoulder, <laughs> if you can feel that, it makes the healing more effective. If you truly are experiencing it in your perception, you can perceive it non-physically or physically, but feeling it, perceiving it in any way helps you to actually believe and bring it into your reality. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Now, darling, what about those books? Oh, okay. Um, sure. So if you're at the beginning of a journey and you're sort of, you've, you're not really sure about the psycho-spiritual stuff and you're more wanting to know an alternative science-y perspective, um, the first book I would uh, suggest is The Biology of Belief by Dr. Bruce Lipton. Mm. The second book I would suggest is Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself by Dr. Joe Dispenza. I lent my copy out. We couldn't see that. Can you try that again? Yeah. No, can't see it at all. Can't see the words. Oh, it's white. So. Yeah. So Dr. Right. Joe Dispenza, that's such a brilliant book. And I wish I'd never let my, I'm not lending any more books out. I'm not doing it anymore. I'm just going to say, no, buy your own. That's such a good book, isn't it? Yeah, breaking the habit of being yourself. Then two um, books uh, by Dr. David Hawkins. One is sort of a summary of all of his works and he's written 10 or 12 amazing books. The summary is called The Wisdom of Dr. David Hawkins. The Wisdom, it's an overview of all of his work. And then of all of the books that he's written, I think the easiest to understand for if the first time reading his would be in besides this one, this would be the easiest and the simplest and more of an overview. But it's power versus force. Yes. Yeah. Pa power versus force by Dr. David Hawkins. Now, if you want um, maybe some, some feel good type of um, help, you're, you're, you're sort of more in a mindset of the Western model of self-analysis. This is a lovely book called What's in the Way is the Way. What's in the Way is the Way by Mary O'Malley. Oh, Mary O'Malley. Right. So to me, every problem we have to me, it's an opportunity for healing where some people will get triggered, <laughs> you know, or there, there's in competition or um, they um, don't have any confidence or they're very aggressive or arrogant or what have you. And they can't hear conversations like this. They're not really into, I want to know what makes me how I am. They don't want to be an archaeologist of their own consciousness those are not gonna be people that are gonna be interested in what Danny and I are talking about now. Mm -hmm. If you also want another simple sort of feel good book, this book was written by Bill McKenna. It's called The Only Lesson. And Bill McKenna is a man that um, created Cogna Movement. So Cogna Movement, mm -hmm. It's, um, I'm a practitioner of Cogna movement, and I never would have two years ago gone and gotten certified in another modality if it didn't work and help me more than anything I've ever experienced. It's called Cogna movement, and it's EMDR on steroids. Mm -hmm. it, it involves, uh, it includes um, EMDR, brain spotting, the best parts of neurolinguistic programming, um, Chinese medicine, it's phenomenal. Using the eyes and the left, right hemispheres of the brain and the meridians of the body to release issues that we are consciously aware of and to find the many, many dozens or tens or hundreds <laughs> of other issues that are contributing to it, like the Velcro that is holding in the emotional trauma. 
it's 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 really wonderful. So Bill wrote this book called The Only Lesson. Bill McKenna, he's the creator of Cognitive Movement, and it's basically he is saying that the only lesson is forgiveness. And it's a lovely little book. It's a lovely little book. <clears throat> if you're interested in um, launching into an understanding of consciousness, um, Lynn McTaggart has written several books. Um, one is called The Field, love um, a, a lovely book by Masoro Emoto, who is the doctor that did um, experiments with water, consciousness experiments with water, and then froze the water and looked at the ice crystals under, under a microscope. Genius, genius, genius. Again, the brain is a pharmacy and the mind is the prescribing doctor. To, my, to me, <clears throat> I am not a neuroscientist, <laughs> but to me, our mind is our consciousness. Our consciousness is outside of our body. Our consciousness is our soul with a lot of programs, unconscious programs, subconscious programs, archetypal programs, and collective consciousness programs. So I do talk about it a little bit differently, a lot differently than Freud and a little bit differently than Carl Jung, not too much differently than Carl Jung. <clears throat> the conversation that we're having today about ascension, um, here are a couple simple books that might help you under, and this is a very, very simple, it's a sort of a paintbrush overview of some very complicated subjects. It's called Soul Reunion by Susan Taylor Shire. Soul Reunion by Susan Taylor Shire. Very simple, very simple. And then um, this one I think I'm not supposed to share today and these other I'm not. Um, these ones I think I will though. <clears throat> so we talk a lot about our emotions affecting our body and creating physical pain, right? That's not to say that we don't have chemical imbalance in our intestines, that we don't need probiotic, prebiotic, you know, any of that stuff. I'm, I'm not saying that. But what I am I'm suggesting... We're not prescribing, you know, what losers of course not. That run boob tube. They're looking out for anything like that to right. use people of, you know, giving medical advice, which of course we're not. So just go away. Continue, please. Absolutely. What I'm suggesting is that the brain is a pharmacy and every chemical our body needs can be generated within our brain. All of the proteins, amino acids, peptides, you name it, that all comes from the brain, the endocrine system. And our thoughts and our state of mind really are at the root of a lot of our physical ailments. So the most simple, I would go so far as to say oversimplified, but cheapest, simplest way to think about this would be this little $12, $13 book by Louise Hay called Heal Your Body. Again, this is just a paintbrush overview, but if you want to put your toe in the water, Louise Hay, Heal Your Body. The next level would be by Lisa Borbeau, Your Body's Telling You to Love Yourself. Your Body is Telling You to Love Yourself by Lisa Borbeau. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> There are a lot of people who are very well known in the esoteric community, and um, some people are some people resonate to some people's perspectives, and some people don't. So, if you don't resonate with this person's perspective or her model or her way of teaching, if you can look past this, this book is genius. I mean, I think this woman is lovely, and I think her heart is one in the right place. But here's my perspective about different people having different perspectives. And it's, I, I think it's important to say this. We all have different soul lineage experience. And our souls 
are drawn to what we already know. So if we have been a Buddhist more than anything else in any other life, we're going to be drawn to Buddhist perspectives. If we've been a, a Sikh or Islamic more than we've been Jewish or we've been Christian or we've been um, an indigenous uh, shaman or sage, then we're going to resonate. It doesn't make any of the other perspectives wrong. It just means we might not resonate with it because our soul isn't familiar with it. Another yeah. thing that lends to that is our galactic heritage, our soul's galactic heritage. On different planets, they believe different things, believe it or not. We don't leave this planet and they have the same Encyclopedia Britannica on every planet it's just, that's just not true yeah. they don't even have the same concept of this their their history or our history yeah. so if they can't believe in you know agree on that they're definitely also not agreeing on religious or spiritual perspectives oh, either definitely. and a lot of the more advanced civilizations don't have religion it's not needed right. to empower or sorry empower them and enslave the, the the people of that planet stop teasing about the book already what is it oh <laughs> energy energy healing for trauma stress and chronic illness by cindy dale so if you were to look up, for example, if you have Lyme disease or if you have um, a, a, a microbe imbalance in, in your or in your body, or if you have um, uh, what's it called fibromyalgia or you have um, any issues, any issues, she breaks it down so simply. She talks about what's going on in the energy field. She talks about what's going on in the different chakras and the imbalance that lead to it. Now, in a perfect world, this would not be the first thing I would offer to someone, right? In a perfect world, I'd let's say, let's do self-awareness 101. Let's get to understand our energy and our subtle bodies and our chakras and know what they do and what kinds of things we can find there. And let's do this for six months, nine months, or a year. This book would not be the first thing I recommend. But if there are people who are really have been on a journey for a long time and they understand pranic healing or energy medicine, this book has some really phenomenal answers in it. And in, oh, in terms of can't see the words, can't see it. So it's oh, you get you no know, with the green screen, it's tricky. There, right? Energy healing for trauma, stress, and chronic illness. And her name again is Cindy Dale, C-Y-N-D-I Dale, D-A-L-E. And again, if you don't <clears throat> resonate with that, that no problem. <laughs> Here's a book, part one, volume one. Look how big it is. Oh my God. It's called Metaphysical Anatomy. Look, this is a- is Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man on the front. Yeah. This is literally a metaphysical encyclopedia of every illness that ever existed. It's called metaphysical anatomy and it's it's incredible. So if you're if you have a PhD in biology or physiology or some sort of medicine and you're a medical intuitive, that's the kind of book that would really fascinate fascinate you. Um, other things that I want to mention real quick are different indigenous philosophies. Um, so here's one called Shaman Healer Sage by Robert Violdo. He was an anthropologist who was very interested in psychosomatic health. He studied uh, energy medicine. Um, he believed that we could biologically self-regulate -reg our own health. And he went to both Costa Rica and I think Peru. So he worked with the Paco Caro in yeah. Peru and Costa Rican shamanism as well. He has fascinating life. He has, um, I think he has a school on the internet. It might be called the Four Winds so Society. Um, here's another uh, man that has written several books on shamanism. His name is Hank Wesselman. This is a book called Spirit Walker. Mm -hmm. He was also an anthropologist and did a lot of work. My understanding is in Africa and all around the world, actually. And he worked and studied with Kahuna and Hawaiian shamanism. Mm -hmm. Kahunaism. It's it's fascinating. It just depends 
what type of shamanic culture you resonate yeah. with. Oh, speaking of which, Sandra Ingerman, Soul Retrieval, mm. I think she coined the phrase uh, cross-cultural shamanism. So I'm pretty sure she studied with, um, who did she study with? Um, Michael Harner, M Michael Harner, uh, Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Harner, the, the foundation for shamanic studies. Right. Um, I, I think so. And um, she, there's another woman who, what is her company called? Um, Light Song, a 21st century shamanic school or something. She actually offers bachelor's degrees and PhDs in shamanism. And her name is Jan Engel Smith. And I think it's called Becoming Yourself, Becoming Yourself. Oh, right. I'm down with the books. I'm, I'm oh, off. sorry. No, no, it's beautiful. Thank you so much. My God. So guys, I hope that you paused and wrote down the books and just go with what resonates with you that Ginny has just shown you I mean, just such a wealth, a treasure box on our planet of knowledge and information of wherever you are at the moment, you know, wherever you are. And, um, you know, the other day, well, a few months ago, I did a beautiful one-to-one um, -one interview with my friend, Dr. Michael Sala, who created ExoPolitics. And it's such a lovely interview because a lot of us, we don't really know who Dr. Michael Sala is other than what we see with the brilliant information he presents and the research that he does and his brilliant brain and the amazing, amazing people that he brings on his channel. You know, some we can't see because they're hidden and some we can, most we can. And, and when I was interviewing this beautiful, beautiful man, uh, he mentioned the book, The Only Planet of Choice. And I'm like, oh my God, I read that when it came out in like 95 or 96. And it was life-changing for me. So much so that I literally sent that book to Steven Spielberg in 95 or 96 to say, mate, you have got to make this into a movie. And, you know, nothing happened. But anyway, it was very important to me that I sent it to him and that's what I did. And, and my point is, I was working with a beautiful client the other day, and I recommended that book for her. So then she said, oh my God, Danny, look at this. This book's like $175. And I'm like, holy wow. You know, I mean, it is a great book, but that's really steep. And then she found it for free in a PDF. And then she sent it to me and she's so sweet. She's like, maybe you want to give that to your other you know, to other people that want it. But yeah, so there's always a different way to have access to this wonderful knowledge on this beautiful planet that is just waiting to be discovered on so many different levels. And Ginny, thank you so much. That was just so thoughtful of you and lovely of you and so appreciated, darling. You're welcome. I'd, I'd like to share one more thing before we close. A couple of weeks ago, I did a workshop for Chicago IANS on the topic of soul agreement, which Danny and I were going to try to chat about today, but we didn't have time. So if people were to go to my website, heartofthehorse.us, and click under About Ginny, uh, you choose the Interviews and Advocacy tab. And then at the very top, there's a gray box that says Ginny's Top Picks. So Ginny's top picks and the first video is titled Soul Agreements. So I just did a workshop on soul agreements. And if that doesn't change your life, I don't know what will. I mean, for us to truly understand what makes us tick and why we have always believed a certain way, but we don't know why or felt a certain way or had a limitation that we just can't shake you will find potentially, you will find some really interesting answers in that uh, workshop that I did. And it's free on my website. That's brilliant. So once again, your website is heartofthehorse.us for United States, not dot um, which is what I wrote last week. I shouldn't even know I'd done that. You're like, it's not um, it's I'm like, oh my God, that's funny that that did make me laugh, dot um. <laughs> Anyway, Ginny, darling, thank you so much for um, being here, bringing your wealth of knowledge and sharing more love for humanity, for the humans, the hybrids and all those in between and the animals and everything 
else. Final words from you, my love. Thank you for the opportunity. And it can, it, this journey to self-awareness does not have to take decades of study. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. We can become self-aware through simple, practical tools, and we don't have to become a scholar. We really don't. We really don't. We can get through this. Beautiful. Jenny, thank you so much. And to you lovely people out there, um, thank you so much for sharing time and space with us. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you for sharing your um, yourselves and, and being open to your own inner healing. And hopefully some of the, um, the book recommendations support you. Hopefully some of the exercises that we share today support you. And hopefully you really love yourself and put yourself first and put your recovery as a human on this planet, or whatever being you are, um, as a priority, because you, you are amazing. So I send you my love and I'll see you soon. Thank you, Ginny.